Hi, everybody. Welcome to News by Muse. We are here for another great interview about this great documentary that just recently came out called Why on Earth. We're here with director, per- producer, I guess you could put your many hats under your title under uh, with this film, Katie Cleary. How is everything going? How has been the reception towards the documentary so far? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Um, you know, uh, it took us four years to make it and uh, it's finally out. It's like everything kind of led up to this point. So it's um, you can find it on iTunes, Amazon, um, Vudu, Hulu, uh, Hulu. So it's it's yeah, it's very exciting um, to finally bring this to an audience and and share my passion and my love for wildlife and really all species with the world. Yeah. And you really get in, in the documentary, you really touch on some really tough subjects, especially subjects that we have seen over not just over the last four years with certain people that we will will leave unnamed (laughs) but also the whole yeah especially with poaching the world in general Mm -hmm. and what's been going on uh how tough was it to be able to get not only the access because a lot of people don't want to talk publicly about what's going on but you really got some great interviews really telling the story of what's happening in this world yeah, thank you. You know, um, to be honest, you know, I started uh, 10 years ago. I started my foundation. Um, I started in animal welfare when I was about 11 years old, rescuing animals um, from unfortunate circumstances, whether it's, um, you know, uh, wild bunnies or, or squirrels or birds that, you know, had, um, you know, had found and we would re- rehabilitate them and then um, bring them to our local wildlife rehab and, and vet um, and then set them free. So it started at a young age, but the foundation Peace for Animals started uh, 10 years ago along with our news network, World Animal News. And and so I had these relationships with, with these amazing organizations and amazing activists and conservationists from around the world. And I thought, you know, um, we really need to do something now. We're in a race against extinction. Uh, this film needs to happen. Um, it, it just so happens that, you know, uh, we, we got all the interviews right before the pandemic, which was incredible. So our last interview was with Clint Eastwood about a month before the pandemic hit. And it was just the timing was was perfect. So we had filmed everything and then we were editing um, for about two years because we had so much footage. Um, we traveled uh, throughout Kenya, South Africa, um, Indonesia, so Sumatra and Borneo um, to, to see the protection of orangutans and the deforestation issue uh, in regards to palm oil. So, you know, um, there, there's just so many issues. And the thing is, is that um, people need to know what's happening. And I, I think that that's critical is that this is not covered in everyday news. So that's mm-hmm. why, um, of course, I created Why on Earth, uh, the film, and, and then the first documentary, Give Me Shelter. Yeah. And that's and that's the one thing I love about this documentary. You really explore, you really delve into what is going on and you talk to the people who are there on the ground, which is very to me it's it's eye opening to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Especially um where people don't seem like we we have global warming issues already and they don't realize how much animals play into this whole global warming factor as well. And yeah. what was it? What was it like to tell this story and to be able to show like, hey, there's a real in your documentary, you really say there's a problem and we need to fix it. What was it like to explain everything? Yeah, the most impactful thing for me was just, uh, you know, showing the deforestation of our forest uh, for for palm oil, for um, paper pulp, for timber, um, something, you know, that we have so many alternatives now. and, And do we really have to? be destroying, you know, three football fields every half an hour of critical rainforest habitat where, you know, most of the species uh, and endangered species uh, and threatened species from around the world live. So, you know, we wanted to put that first uh, because I think, you know, especially with palm oil being in 50% of all products in the grocery store, um, you know, we need to start looking at what we're buying and consuming, um, you know, buy recycled paper, uh, make sure that, you know, everything is, is recyclable uh, and, and make sure that you recycle. Um, don't purchase single use plastic, um, you know, just and, and make sure that, you know, when you're buying paper products, make sure it's uh, there's a, the rainforest certified seal on there. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's, it's not just this, the palm oil epidemic. It's, it's a lot of things that we as consumers in the United States and around the world are purchasing and, and we're aiding to this destruction. Um, and then, of course, you've got the, the wildlife trafficking and the wildlife trade in Africa. And, and that's just it, it's gotten worse through the pandemic because there's no, no eyes on the ground. So that's the mm-hmm. issue is that if there was, um, you know, not many tourists visited Africa during that time, of course, because it was closed. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's no eyes on the ground. We, how are we going to? 
you know, know what's really truly going on. Uh, so these poachers had an opportunity, but now the tourism is coming back, which is a good thing for the protection of these species. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, don't purchase wildlife products. I mean, you know, that's pretty simple. Um, also, you know, try eating more plants, you know, mm -hmm. try going plant-based. Start with yeah. Meatless Mondays. Um, that really helps as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the one thing that I do want to touch on is the fact that where a lot of people don't really show is a big game hunting by these wealthy individuals and how that's affecting everything and how a lot of communities there's there's some that are trying to to stop it and there's a lot of people who, that they're, they're not trying at all uh mm -hmm. how hard mm -hmm. was it to show these things uh and did you get any backlash from it because i know a lot of people i don't know why there's such a sense of that mm -hmm. you having to go out and kill a rhino or anything is like a big thing yeah for, I, i don't see it i don't It's understand terrible. it yeah and i don't get yeah. it What was it like to be exploring that? And that and that in, involved is already a scary situation as, as it is. Yeah, we've been covering it for a while. Um, and so, like I said, for the last 10 years, even on World Animal News, um, we did an undercover investigation at Safari Club International, which is the largest trophy hunting convention um, in the world. Um, and it's like almost like a union for trophy hunters. It's terrible. Um, and what I saw there was really sickening. And I thought, you know what? Um, we want to dive deep into this. And, and that's why, you know, even with Clint being a part of it, you know, he, he's a huge animal lover. And so, you know, and, and I think a lot of people in the film are against trophy hunting and against hunting just in general. And I know he speaks um, a little bit about it. So I think that, um, you know, nowadays we don't, there's no, it's not necessary. It was never necessary, but I think just to kill something for, for greed, for, for, uh, and if for ego, for, you know, it, it's, there's, there's an issue there. I mean, I don't know how anyone could be, be okay with killing an elephant or a rhino that are endangered species and that have been around for millions of years and don't have, to, in my opinion, much time left on this earth if we continue doing this. Because it's not yeah. only the trophy hunt and the hunters, it's the illegal poaching as well. So, yeah. um, and, and then there's disease and drought and, and they have so much against them already as far as, you know, from human and, and climate you know, issues and causes. So, you know, we really have to spread compassion and, and we're stewards of this planet. And, and that's truly what I believe. Um, I have a strong faith in God and I feel like, you know, people misinterpret that. Um, mm -hmm. We are supposed to be the caretakers of this planet. We're not supposed to just take and take. We have to give and we have to protect mm -hmm. these animals for future generations. Yeah. And I agree with you 100%. Like, I don't think people realize when, uh, when a, there's an extinction of an animal species, how much it affects our entire ecosystem and our world as well. And how it, exactly. I mean, and there's movies that have shown documentaries that have shown it. There have been movies that, show, that have pretty much worn upon it in science fiction, in books and for years of what could happen if an animal is taken off of this planet and how it affects everybody. And I think that's what I love about this documentary and how it shows, like what are the consequences Yeah. And, and we wanted to show the truth. And that was, the, you know, the first documentary, Give Me Shelter. Um, you know, we didn't have the budget for that one. So we did. It was very interview based. and It was just shot in, in California. But this one, I thought, okay, we, we have to do a great sequel. We have to be on the ground. We have to interview the people and see firsthand with our own eyes what's truly happening. And then and then there's a solution, a legislative solution. So how do you, you know, take these issues in Africa and Indonesia and everything that's going on? Because we are contributing to those issues. And, and then show the solution on a federal and a state level of how you pass legislation to protect these animals and their habitat. Yeah, I only have, yeah, I only have a couple more questions left. So I'll save the fluff one and the fun one for last. But the, <laughs> next one, but the next one is because this is a serious subject. And I think what you're touching upon is a, something that nearly needs to be seen, especially as we've seen yeah. what's going on with this on this earth currently uh, and the of increase course. of of heat, the melting of the snow caps and everything. There's a lot of things that we have to really start stepping up and doing our part as humans, which we haven't done. The one thing I do want to talk about is, uh, with the documentary is the fact that how do you make this change and what have you seen so far in the field doing the documentary? And yeah, we could do things in here in the United States, but we need the whole, the global community to participate as well. 
what do you, what are some of the things that you think we need to do after being front and center within the documentary? Yeah, I, I truly think ecotourism and, and like is one of the number one things in visiting these countries firsthand to see these animals in the wild, because that's going to bring in more tourism dollars to these countries that really need it, that are third world countries and they need help. And so it, it truly changed my life when I visited Africa for the first time. And I, I really want to encourage people to, to go to these countries and, and, you know, say vote with your dollars. It's very true uh, because wherever you're putting your your funding, your money, you know, the governments are going to notice that. Mm -hmm. They really will. So I really think ecotourism and photo safaris is, is critical, whether it's going to Yellowstone and photographing wolves or, you know, the bison, um, which we were, we were just there doing, which is incredible. Um, you know, or, or like I said, going to Africa, photographing the elephants, the rhinos, the cheetahs, you know, um, you know, all these beautiful species in the wild. I think that you have to visit their natural habitat. Um, and, and, of course, don't support, uh, you know, the sea worlds of the world and, and zoos. And, you know, um, I think that's coming to an end. So, um, and then, you know, uh, support your local wildlife rescues and rehabs. Um, adopt, don't shop. Go to your local shelter. Foster an animal. There's so many at the local shelter that need homes. And then try adopting a plant-based diet because that will save so many lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, finally, final question. Like I said, it had to be a fun question about it. Getting all these celebrities sure. to be a part, <laughs> getting, to get Clint Eastwood, John Sally, and you get a bunch of people who really have a name and have shown their openness about needing to protect not only animals, but the environment as well. How was it to get to bring them on board and uh, to have them a part of this documentary? Yeah, it was incredible, incredible. Uh, you know, Clint was amazing to work with. We filmed at his ranch uh, in California, and, you know, he rescued 65 horses uh, that were going to be slaughtered, um, actually, that were rounded up, um, you know, in, in California. And it was just, it's heartbreaking to think that things like these are, like this is happening, but um, it was so impactful to get him a part of the film because a lot of people probably didn't know that he was an animal rescuer and, and such a huge animal lover. Um, and then, you know, John Sally was always so much fun to work with. Um, you know, everyone in the film just, you know, they're true uh, advocates and warriors for animals. And, you know, not only do they talk about, you know, their love for animals, but they actually do something about it. And so I, you know, that's what I really respect, not just talking about it, but actually, you know, um, you know, living by example and showing people what they can do to really create positive change. Yeah. Katie. I can't say it enough. This was a really good documentary. Really enjoyed it. Uh, please, before we leave, uh, tell everybody how they could watch it, where they could view it, if they want to see this uh, sure. documentary. Sure, yes. Um, you know, please tune in um, on Apple, iTunes, Amazon, um, Vudu, uh, Vimeo, um, uh, some of the major streaming platforms. Um, yeah, you can just tune in. Uh, it's, it's live. So hopefully, and, and leave a great review if you guys like the film. <laughs> Awesome. Katie, you thank you so like much it. for stopping with yeah. thank you so much for stopping with us here. Thank on you so much. We look forward to uh, seeing more from you in the future and your organization. Uh, by the way, yep. uh give an email address or uh, a URL for how they could find your organization, your nonprofit organization. Sure, absolutely. It's peace, the number four animals dot net. And then um, World Animal News is our news network, worldanimalnews.com, and we uh, highlight breaking news from around the world in the animal world every day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Okay, God bless. Bye.